So this is Silver Castle. I'm not really sure why Eggman named his base a castle. I mean, castle sounds too medieval. This puzzle looks a lot more difficult than it really is. It turns out that all you have to do is jump on top of the spinning platforms over and over and over again. And that's what causes all the lights to light up and allows you to progress. It's a lot more of, a, of an issue in Act 2. In Act 1, it's really toned down. Follow the route that I'm going exactly. Because that's how you get through this place. My biggest problem with Silver Castle is that it's a teleporter maze. So unless you follow a guide, you aren't going to know exactly which teleporters to get through. But when you do what I do, Act 1 is pretty short and easy. Silver Castle is okay. It's it has a completely forgettable theme to it. And I'm seeing sparkles around Sonic when he gets the shield. That's just wrong. When, when Sonic gets a shield, he should be covered in a in a spear to represent him having a shield. It's, in this game, like, what, was it too much for them to handle? Also, I noticed sparkles coming out of Sonic when he double jumped. Are they supposed to be electricity or something? Yeah, I don't like the way the menus look at this game. Yellow and green do not mix with each other very well. And I don't like the arrow that points downwards. Oh, that is cheap. That is cheap. An enemy right there when you rush forwards and hit him because of screen crunch. You didn't know he was there. And you didn't have any ring, so you died. It sort of reminds me of how in the beginning of Collision Chaos, if you just run forwards, you'll run into spikes without any rings. And you can easily do it again because you have to stop in front of them. And you might not stop in time. Just like the previous level, this place has breakable floors that you stand on. And just like the previous act, it has teleporters that go through. Well, it's not as much of a teleporter maze. This is... Well, I like the fact that they at least tried something unique with this level. Even if the unique things they tried were annoying. Also, I didn't talk about it in the previous part, because I was too busy talking about other things. But, spoiler alert, I failed the special stage too. And, I showed off what happens when you fail a special stage in the previous special stage. I mean, I wasn't trying to, but at least I showed it off. Eggman flies in on a jetpack or whatever, and he steals the emerald from you. Now my question is, how did he get into the special stage in the first place? Did he collect 50 rings too? But you don't have to collect 50 rings here. I guess Eggman happened to find the special stage at the same time that you did. But why do you have to collect a certain amount of ring energy in order to make it so that he doesn't steal it from you? He doesn't show up at all in fact. Also, something really important that I haven't talked about yet is that in this game, you only lose 10 rings when you get hit. Like, if you have over 10 rings, like, let's say you have 20 rings and you get hit. Well, you'll end up with 10 rings rather than zero. That's probably what contributes to making this game so easy, is that you don't lose all of your rings at once when you get hit, which helps make the bosses easier. This isn't an easy part, though. Look at how fast that spiked wall was moving. That I was, like, literally right up against it. Oh, thanks for the screen crunch there. I died to that enemy because when you get hit when you jump into the bottom of him. And he's flying above me. And it's instinctive for me to jump because of those enemies at the bottom. I want to hit them. I have a feeling that if I roll into a ball to hit them, then I'll end up slowing down and getting hit by the spiked wall behind me. So, the spike wall is a lot more dangerous than it looks. It's really easy for you to die to it. It feels like it moves way too fast. Because it's always right up behind you. Something I do appreciate about this game is that the breakable walls actually look like they're breakable. Because in a lot of Sonic games, the breakable walls don't look breakable. 
so it's not very intuitive that you can break through them in the first place. At least this game makes it easy to tell. Which is good because breaking through walls is mandatory for beating the game. It's not like you just get special rings and secrets and stuff. And see, look at how fast that thing caught up to me. Apparently Eggman is capable of building spiked walls that can move at the speed of sound. At least there's a checkpoint right there. And how generous of the spiked wall to only decide to race after me after I had gotten the checkpoint. That is so convenient. Although that spiked wall wasn't really that much of an issue. Again, just jump on these things repeatedly and that'll light up the lights. It's easy to not notice the lights in the background, but there they are. And you just gotta keep on jumping on the, sp the spinning platforms. And you don't even have to jump into them in a very specific way. There's no timing involved. There's no jump onto a specific one. It looks a lot more complicated than it actually is. You just keep on jumping onto them over and over again. And I just hate how it looks so complicated. Because I looked up a guide for that. And it turns out I could just figure it out on my own. But, the, so the biggest problem I have with this level is, well, it's hard to tell which one I hate more. The, the fact that it's a teleporter maze, which does not belong in a Sonic game, or in any platformer for that matter, because how does that, what does that have to do with platforming? Nothing, it's just trial and error, memorization. Or you look up a guide until you find out where you're supposed to go. So I hate the fact that it's a teleporter maze, and I hate the fact that the spiked walls will easily kill you. Or it's less the spiked walls and more the the fact that you jump into the enemies with the spikes on them from below. But now we're finally past Silver Castle. We've just got the final boss to go. Because I didn't have all the Chaos Emeralds at the end of the game, I wasn't able to fight the true final boss. I just hate it when 2D Sonic games act like you beating all the levels and bosses doesn't actually matter. Because you didn't play a whole bunch of mini games that have nothing to do with the actual gameplay. It, it, like, why is my victory invalid just because I didn't complete a bunch of stupid mini games? Why do I have to get all the Chaos Emeralds to beat the final boss? I'm making the boss look harder than it is at the very beginning. This boss is actually pretty simple. You can actually, you can still move the platform during the cutscene where he's doing that. It's unintuitive, but you can. This boss is basically Pong. The moving platform moves pretty slowly. You don't really have any hope of bringing it from all the way from one side to the other. If it's in the center while, while the cutscene is taking place, then you're probably going to be able to make it to the other side in time. For most of the fight, it's pretty easy knowing exactly how he's going to... because he goes from the left to the right to left to the right. It's only later on that he starts repeating himself and going left, left, or right, right. If the blue torch thing goes down at you, then you can just jump, and it's pretty easy to time. So it's a simple boss, but it's also a creative idea, so I appreciate that. So I wasn't able to make it to the true final boss, because I didn't get all the Chaos Emeralds, god forbid. So I'll have to show someone else's footage. It looks pretty hard though. Yeah, I think this boss goes on for way too long. Like, I think the boss, w the boss would have been a little more interesting if he could fire from the center of him, as well as just from to the left or to the right. Ooh. 
What I didn't mention in my Sonic 1 LP is that there's actually a debug mode in it. The debug cheat is up C, down C, left C, right C, A start, hold A until Sonic appears on the screen. And there you go. And I guess the debug mode works the same as in any Sonic level. Any, any Sonic game. Like, you can place different objects, and you can choose which object to place depending on what level you're in. So it's sort of like a make-your-own-Sonic level thing. And you can also give yourself item boxes. And so you can make the final boss of Sonic 1 really easy by just giving yourself rings. Well, not really easy, it's still the same strategy, but easier on you. That's the bad ending. Eggman gets away rather than sinking to his death. I definitely consider that to be a bad ending. Just because he's a villain, after all. The world would be better off without him. Just saying. The good ending has Eggman not get away, and he just sinks into the ocean. But the good ending is usually canon, so... I don't know. Also, that ending was such a ripoff of Castlevania. Because in Castlevania, you stand over the cliff and you watch as the Death Egg sinks. Or, not the Death Egg, the castle. That looks like the Death Egg, but it was just the Silver Castle. It also It's also a ripoff of Donkey Kong Country's secret ending. Now that I've actually seen it, I never actually played Donkey Kong Country. I mean, I played the first two levels, I so wasn't able to get past it. Anyways, Sonic Blast is pretty slow. It has some weird physics and controls, like your momentum, it's hard to, you always have your momentum there. It's hard to stop. You try to spin dash right close to a loop and you don't go all the way up it like in every other Sonic game. And you spin dash through an enemy and you uncurl for some reason. Blue Marine Zone is an absolute nightmare. And Silver Castle is an annoying teleporter maze. Although I like the bosses, they're creative and simple. Which is how Sonic bosses should be, really. And the first three levels aren't bad. I mean, Yellow Desert is the best desert level I've ever played. Although it's not saying much. See you in the next part. For the extra part of Sonic Blast.